Okay, grade 12, we're going to continue with our cash flow statement. I want to give you an overview before I step into the part that we're going to do today. I'm in your textbook, task 3.33, just after it speaks about financing activities. That's where we're going to continue now. So first of all, just to recap, we are done with the first note, cash generation from operations. 2.1 million. Just a reminder, how did we get that and what did we all what did we use? Well, first of all, take note. I haven't put in some emphasis on it already, um, so we need to look at it today. Profit before tax, okay, not after tax, because we're going to come back to tax today. 1.2 million. Then there was two items that we had to add back into our profits, the two expenses. We plus them, and we got 2 million and 65 thousand. Then we had some fun with decrease and increases of the working capital, our current A's and current liabilities. So for the inventory, it went, our cash went up, debtors down and creditors went up. And then we had an answer, 2.1 million as how our cash changed over the past year, specifically relating or pointing to operations. So what we're going to do today is we're going to look at these three items, interest, now, remember, we just added the amount from the income statement back in. Now we're going to look at actually how much cash did we spend on this. Dividends, we're going to look at how much cash we spent on that. And tax, how much cash. So you'll see for dividends and for, for tax, there's, there's a note for each of them. Interest will have similar calculation, but you can just show it in a bracket um, as it comes. So I'm going to your textbook, as I mentioned before, just after task 3.33, where we finished our last work. Now, the fact that they mention financing activities can be very confusing. It sounds like we have now jumped to this green section here, the third section, cash flows from financing. Now, this is not the same thing. This refers to capital and some loans, funds. How did we gain our funds or did we pay back some of our funds? Whereas this financing activities is referring to tax, interest and dividends. Three things that will imp impact our daily operations. So therefore, it goes to the top section and it will be within the first section of our cash flow, this pink orange level. So those are for financing, interest, dividends, and tax, but it is slotted into the first part of our cash flow. So don't let that word there confuse you. So let's just recap here. They're giving you three steps that we've done already. We had our net profit before tax, we eliminated deep appreciation and interest and then we looked at our changes in our working capital so we up to step three now and we got a result and that was 2.1 million whatever it was now we're going on to step four we continue with the same section of the cash flow in your textbook they state step four is the interest five is tax and six are regarding the dividends it doesn't have matter necessarily in which order you you do them when you have this exercise, but they're all part of the first section of your cash flow. So interesting what this little cricket is saying here. The amount in the income statement for these three items is the amount for the entire year. Sometimes we have not paid that full amount yet. So if you look at your income statement, you've got in the textbook, there's interest of 7,000. That's how much it was for the past 12 months. Now, remember, we have accrued expenses probably in here. We might have not paid all of it, but we put it in. Income statement. Tax, 13500 for this year. We might not have paid all of that yet. So how can we find out how much we actually paid? We're going to use the information that we get from our actual balance sheet. So within your balance sheet, let's just look at the interest first. It's this line, expenses payable. Last year, there was amount that we didn't pay. This year, there's another amount that we didn't pay. So that would be our accrued expense. So we will use these two amounts and the one we got from the income statement to work out what we paid in cash. So let me show you with a working how we're actually gonna do that. So I'm just going to do interest 
um, the others are done on the same basis. First of all, I know I have 1,000. So you'll have a little sentence that you'll write here, but um, I'm just going to shorten it now. The amount that was due at the beginning of the year. I know according to this balance sheet I just showed you that I owed 1,800 for my interest expense at the beginning of the year. I also know that during the year, the amount according to my income statement, 7,000 Rand, I was supposed to have paid that. So in total, I should have paid 8,800 Rand for interest. Last year's, that was overdue and this year's. And then I go to the balance sheet for this year, 27, and I see my expenses payable, accrued expense there for my interest. Let me just get the right amount here, 2,500. Amount due at the end of the year is 2,500. Okay, now will you agree with me that if I owe this at the end of the year, it means I didn't pay it. So if I want to know how much I did pay, if I only owe that at the end of the year, I would take 1,800 plus 7 minus 2.5 and, and I will get 6.3. What did I do? This is what I owed at the beginning and this is what I owed for the year. But of that 8,800, I still now, today, owe 2.5. So that means I paid 6,300. Okay, awesome. Let's try the other ones. I'm going to show them in the book first. So let's go back to the income statement. Let's look at the tax. The tax that was due for the year, remember this number, was 13,500. But if I go to my balance sheet and I look what's going on here with income tax, be careful to not go to PAYE. That's something very different. I can see there was amounts due both years, I mean, it's under trade and other payables. Again, outstanding liabilities. So I'm going to do the same calculation for the tax. So I'm going to say at the beginning of the year, the amount, well, let me show you, sorry, due at the beginning that I owed them was 900 Rand. Okay, so I know I need to pay that this year. Then I know the amount according to my income statement for the past 12 months that I should have paid was 13,500. So if I add these together, I know how much tax I should have paid up to date. But as always, there's a small amount that I didn't pay. And of this total amount, I did not pay 1,200. So the cash amount, so this is my cash amount. That's what you can call it. Cash amount paid or whatever, cash that you paid is if you calculate that let me just get the right answer 13,200 again that's what i owed for last year now i have to add this year's with it so that's my total that i owe but i still haven't paid that part so that means i've paid 13,200 and finally let's look at the dividends i'm going to show you again so for dividends, I can actually not go to the income statement because dividends are not shown in the income statement at all. Dividends you'll find under your um, balance sheet, dividends on ordinary shares, there's 10,000 Rand, and that would include my total that I declared at the end of the year as well as interim that I paid during the year. Okay, so there's 10,000, and then I can see here at the bottom, these amounts are still owed, so they'll be payables. They are liabilities. So let's do exactly the same calculation for dividends. The amount that I owe at the beginning of the year. If you look in your trade and other payables, you owed 1,000 Rand. So that was obviously what you declared at the end of last year. Then you go to your balance sheet at the top. The total dividends for the year, and this is in, important, it's interim as well as declared. All the dividends that you were supposed to pay for this year, in total, you can see it was there in a bracket, 10,000 Rand. 
And then you know, according to trade and other payables, what you still owe at the end of this year, which you haven't paid yet, was 4,000 Rand. So, I owe that and that. 1,000 plus 10 is 11. I should have paid 11,000 Rand's worth of dividends. I didn't. 4,000 was probably declared at the end of the year, and I didn't pay that. So, if I work that out, 11 minus the 4,000, I get 7,000 cash was paid towards my dividends. So what you're gonna do now is you're gonna take these three amounts and as they are, you're gonna put them in the cash flow statement. Just know these amounts are not the same and they're just gonna be all negative because this is cash that I've just spent on these three items. I'll show you the notes later. For now, it's just important that you understand how it's broken down. The wording, though, actually, you can do the wording yourself. The wording is in your textbooks. Um, you can use it as it is there. Let me show you over here. Like I mentioned, interest, you can just do in a bracket. For dividends, amount owing at the end of the previous year. You are very long worded. Dividends paid and recommended. Amount owing at the end of the current year. Amount that you paid. So those um, terminologies, or actually not descriptions, I think it's description. You will find there's an example of a complete cash flow statement. Mine is on page 172, but it's after task 3.41. And you will find the notes number three and four, the words that they use for our specific textbook.